Hi, my name's Terry and I recently posted a video where I almost had a plane crash trying to get out of a short strip with a tailwind and then compounding it all by making a stupid mistake. You can watch that video first if you like, I'll pop a link above or if you prefer you can watch it after this one. I have to admit it really got to me. I've made mistakes before but none quite like this where it really mattered. I can't get that awful feeling of wallowing in the ground effect just a couple of knots above the stall knowing that I can't pull the stick back for fear of a wing drop yet having a wall of trees ahead of me and then later realising it was all down to my stupid pilot error. I did have a couple of uncomfortable nights sleep after that but after a few days I really thought that I put the whole sorry saga to bed. So little did I know the whole thing would come flooding back to me on the very next flight. I don't like this. It's funny because I fly into short grass and farm strips all of the time and although I find some of them quite difficult I've got to admit I relish the challenge. I like the adrenaline rush you get when coming in over the trees into a short field knowing that not everyone does this. I especially like it if there's no chance and I have to gather all my own information then establish who owns it and whether they let me visit or not. So it's been a couple of weeks or so since I, let's call it, had my close call as the aircraft had been in for maintenance and apart from being extra conscious about ensuring I did my checks properly as I departed my home airfield of Northwield near London into hazy but warm weather conditions I was just happy to be flying again. I'd had this loose invitation to visit the fairly local microlite strip of Stoke Medway on the Kent coast from a friend who had just taken over the running of the strip. I'd sent him a message to ask if it was okay for me to call in but I hadn't had a reply. Although seeing as he was super encouraging for me to visit I thought it wouldn't be an issue. Stoke is an unusual grass strip. It has one runway 450 metres or just under 1500 feet long. It sits at just 10 feet above mean sea level and is orientated 0624. It has some small buildings and hangars next to the runway, a seawall the other side and the runway has a marked curve. As if this wasn't tough enough, it has 200 foot high power lines less than 30 metres or 100 feet to the north side of the runway and all along the approach, just to test your nerve. I had visited once before and I landed on runway 06 so I was happy with the procedure and the state of the field. However, with a southerly wind, I would be expecting a light crosswind when I got there. The flight only takes around 15 minutes. As I arrive overhead the field, first thing to do is check the windsock. Looks like it is a southerly as I thought, so favouring runway 24, the one I didn't land on last visit. Also looks like there's no one there, as I head out across the mud and low water and set up on a left hand downward leg. Everything feels fine but as I turn towards the pylons on my base leg I start to get this nervous feeling and I'm reluctant to get close to the wires 60. as I will need to be for the approach. I turn onto final but I'm a little too far south for my liking as those pylons are really starting to get to me. At around a quarter of a mile from landing I'm not happy and I decide to throw it away and commence a go around to have another go. Follow the railway line, that's probably the best bet. So around the circuit I go again and now I'm back on final and I've positioned myself a little bit closer to the pylons and I will try and use the railway line to guide me to the strip this time. Until we get to that tree. I'm trying to focus on the small tree just before the threshold, but those pylons are definitely bothering me. I'm not feeling confident with this approach either, but I continue. I'm telling myself I've done this before and I've done much harder strips, but it's just not working. Then just when I think maybe I've got this, the low fuel pressure warning goes off and that does it. Fuel pressure low. I don't like this. I climb away feeling totally dejected. 
So, what to do next? I could fly back to Northwield, put the aircraft away and forget about the whole thing, but I know I will feel like my mission is incomplete. So I decide to go past Northwield and fly to my favourite little strip at Nuthampstead. Nuthampstead is a disused military airfield that was home to the United States 8th Air Force, the 398th Bomber Group, as well as the 55th Fighter Group during World War II. I'll leave a link in the description where you can find out more about its history. Today all the wartime hard runways are no longer and except for parts of the perimeter track and a concrete slab which splits the grass runway that remains in two, there's very little left. However from the air the original layout is still very much visible. The airfield now hosts a little farm strip with a single grass runway that is orientated 0523 and actually replaces part of the original wartime main runway. It has a total length of 700 metres or just under 2,300 feet, but as mentioned there is a concrete slab that splits the runway which is of very poor ground with stones and broken concrete that you don't want to run an aircraft over at speed. This makes the 05 end have a realistic usable length of 420 metres or 1,380 feet and the 23 end have a usable length of just 280 metres or 919 feet. The airfield is always quiet and being friendly with the owner I get to practice my short landings, especially if the wind favours 2-3 and I can use the sub 300 metre or 1000 foot part. As I approach the field I check the windsock and it's pretty dead, so I decide to recreate the approach into Stoke by doing an angled final onto runway 05. It's actually the other way around on 2-4 at Stoke, but I just want to do something to prove to myself that I can still do all this. I'm using that track down there with the VOR on it, which is actually a leftover from the original runway, and pretending that is like the railway line at Stoke. It's good to set up scenarios when you can on safer, more forgiving runways to check that your aircraft is capable of doing what you ask of it, and to give you the confidence and technique you may need. It is, however, not an excuse for proper performance planning. I cross that pile of mud and land on the smooth surface. I slow the aircraft down to a comfortable speed and carefully cross that nasty bit of concrete. Then taxi down to the old hangar and park up. Oh, I love it here. It's just so peaceful. So, as I was saying, feeling a bit strange. I'm not, um, that's not happened to me for a, for a long time where I've actually felt so, um, not confident. Let me put this down. So, not confident that I, uh, I bolted it. I could have said they were just practice approaches, but they weren't. Still, just, I mean, if these things happen, and I don't know if you've ever had this happen to you, where you just have this sudden sort of like little loss of confidence. Um, you just like build it back up again. I mean, it is all about confidence at the end of the day you've got to be if you don't feel confident don't you can't do it um this guy's flying <laughs> i based a stoke they're flying in and out of that all the time but i suppose because i don't it's like here now when i first came here i mean this is a tight strip because it's split in two we were told in our briefing, don't land on the concrete slab or anywhere near it or won't run over it at any speed because it's not good ground and it'll ruin your prop and uh, the transition isn't great either. So uh, yeah, it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't that good. So we had to split the runway into two, which is great because, I mean, if you ended up running over the concrete a little bit, as long as it wasn't that sort of flat out, you'd, you'd be all right. Um, but we never do. I mean, we always land uh, if we're using 05, which is the one I just landed on. It's uh, 
it's like 400 meters long it's plenty long enough to get this into and then the other side of the concrete slab is about 350 something like that and even when we take off uphill we never hit the slab even two up So it's, uh, yeah, as I say, some people come here and they find it really difficult, especially when you have to fly through the trees on two, three. Um, but I'm used to it. I've done it lots of times. It's not an issue. There's nothing around that I'm bothered about. I find it really comfortable. And that's what it's all about. It's just familiarization. And the first time you go to a strip, or if you haven't been to one for a long time, or you haven't landed on a particular runway, these things can happen, especially when it's a little bit tight. So. Anyway, that's the way I feel. I'm going to drink this Coke and uh, have a little take in the countryside. There's absolutely no one near. That's what I love about it. Look at that. It's just awesome. All you can hear is the birds. That's it. Yeah. It's fine. I'm okay. I think. Did frighten me though, that one. Make sure you watch it. Pure's on trim is set flaps are set engines all good to go full power holding the brakes holding the green revs are okay t's and p's are okay speeds alive, there's a lump here, take the weight off the nose wheel. Yeah, and that was, let's look at that windsock. I can't see it. Losing your nerve after an incident, whether you have 10,000 hours or you're still in training, is something that can happen to us all. My advice would be to just take things back a bit and rebuild your confidence by not overstretching yourself for a while. Do some easy stuff in nice weather or get some extra training in with an instructor and you'll be amazed at how quickly it will come back. Why not watch that nasty incident at Whitwell next, or if you've seen that one, have a look at my fun day flying into some short farm strips where I get rewarded with some lovely ice cream. I hope you found this video entertaining but please remember I'm not an instructor and this is all based on my personal experience as a private pilot here in the UK. Fly safely guys and short field out.